speaker roll is very exciting. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Any Tennessee babes in here? Uh, it's an oxymoron. Actually, it's not. Oh, you know, just for that. Pretty southern girls. Yeah, I was going to say, just for that, you're going to have the hottest chick in the world be like, fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I, I was, am from Tennessee. I was interested. Nashville. And now. That'll give, you a, that'll give you the size of them. Now it's over. So sorry, Martin. You're, are you are you still in jail, or said you got out like ten days ago? Is that? Is yeah, that ten. Question. Okay. He's in no, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's a halfway house, so it's kind of a uh, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Okay. All the fun people of jail, without the bars and the fence and the perimeter trucks, but everything else is kind of there, and you get a phone. Yours is probably yeah. a fancy one though, like a rich people halfway house. No. <laughs> There's no such thing. No, definitely not. Well, rich people jail prison is a thing. There's no, 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 it isn't. No, yeah. it's not. I'm not no, rich. No, no. I was in the exact same prison as Martin, so that should tell you right there. Well, Martin, I mean, did, I don't know if, I'm not trying to be rude, but I was just like, I know he was, he had to pay a bunch of fines and stuff. Yeah, but the fines came after his prison sentence. Yeah, yeah, I'm still rich. It's, uh, there, there's no... <laughs> There's no such thing as the rich person prison. There's federal prison camp, which unfortunately yeah. I didn't even I didn't even get to go to. But well, uh to. Yeah. But for the boiled eggs I would have been there. But yeah. Do you feel bad about the way that you gained all that money? No, why would I? I yeah. Um I must say I'm not like completely um educated or um aware of the whole situation. Um, but from what I gather, there was a um, very uh, important vastly drug that... under pro uh, vastly undervalued <laughs> yes. product. Thank okay, you. Okay, so that's what you're saying. It, it was it was way underpriced, so that was the need for Something this five thousand like percent. I mean, look at what the I mean, look at what it's trading at right now. I mean, I don't. I'm I'm not arguing. Yeah, whether it is or not, I was just asking. For, yeah, no, yeah, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. Uh, no, I'm, I, I like pharmaceuticals as a business model. I think it's a, the world needs strong, healthy, successful pharmaceutical companies that uh, make a ton of money. Why? You know, th well, we had this par pandemic thing recently that was really uh, dangerous. It could have killed a lot of people, but thanks to the pharmaceutical industry, it didn't. It was pretty cool. How, I mean, it's... How, you're saying the vaccines were extremely helpful and because of the pharmaceutical companies... Therefore, we saved a bunch of lives, and therefore, they deserve to gain a bunch of profit off of it. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, they saved the world, basically. I mean, does oh, Coca-Cola deserve to gain a profit? Uh, yes, sure. It. But well, hold on now. They're, they're, they're two different ideas, right? Because um, the, I think I, the product Pfizer, of healthcare. Huh? Pfizer, Pfizer and Moderna saved the world, and the, everybody else didn't. It was amazing. Like they should, they should be, they should be parades for Pfizer and Moderna. Do you That's think fine, like, Humera but... is priced at a reasonable level or any of these other, you know, um, high dollar boutique drugs right now? I mean, they've, when the amount of money that has to go into R&D and the trials for these things is obscene. Uh, and when you mm -hmm. get one winner out of, I don't even know what the stats are. I mean, I don't know how many fail in uh, between phase one and phase three to get it to market, but... I mean, you basically have this one shot to recoup your money to cover your next ten ventures. I mean, but it's, it's, I don't, I, I don't think that there are a lot of huge pharmaceutical companies that fail at that. Right? They're often making tons and tons, billions of dollars. Why? Why would that be necessary? You don't see, yeah. Most most drugs fail. Actually, um, most drugs don't pass phase three. So it's. Uh, well, it's a it's a tough game, like you said. You know, it's uh, for every winner, like Humira, you have ten or twenty losers that don't make it. So, is it uh, what's his name? The um, uh, the the graveyard uh, per, uh the graveyard uh, Alzheimer's yeah. or whatever. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking. about. I'm talking about Talib. Um, oh yeah, yeah. What did he talk about the uh, where people don't take into account the losers? They only right. look at the winners of the situation. I can't remember what he. 
Yeah, it's a fallacy, right? Yeah, it's a fallacy. I mean, because you, you don't think about all the ones that fall by the wayside because all you see is the people that are succeeding. The, the success. Oh, survivor. Yeah, there's survivorship bias. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Thank you. Oh, my mic was. Yeah, survivorship bias. That's a fun one. Yep. So you guys are, are uh, more into uh, sort of unfettered capitalism, even when it comes to uh, products such as healthcare and, and necessary drugs for health. Thank, thank God. Yeah. I mean, without it, we'd be really stuck. Like we'd have a lot of problems. Like my friend was dying of uh, of uh, a disease called uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she was. Oh, I had that. Yeah. So you should thank no pharmaceutical. Yeah. yeah we well. Should. Um, thank, yeah. thank pharmaceutical companies for, yeah, for still being here. Make a profit here. off it. They're not going to develop the the medicine for it. I mean, if you've got an orphan drug or if you've got something that's, you know, it's not financially viable to, to pursue a, a medication for, why do it? Well, so then that, you're talking that's about what... restructuring the entire, you know, um, the healthcare, healthcare industry and make it yeah. some sort of government subsidy, which. I mean, Jesus Christ, when has that ever worked? I mean, yeah. it, it's in, in a it doesn't work in world. any other country. Yeah, in a perfect world, I agree with you 100%, but that's where, an idea. Where, where, where are their government-run pharmaceutical companies anywhere in the world? Name one. Uh, I was just talking about healthcare as an entity in general. Well, Good. payers are one thing. I don't really care who pays for my medicine. <laughs> as long as the money's green, it's fine by me. But in terms of discovering drugs and actually developing them, it's pretty... Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much a capitalist's uh, job, not a government job. Again, that's okay, the whole but... reason that capitalism invented insurance. So, so what I think you should do is, because you're alive, you should actually get on your knees, um, bow down to the floor, and thank the pharmaceutical companies for the next 30 to 60 minutes for saving your life. Um, I find that to be a ridiculous request, sir. I think Why? you should try it and take a photo that... and post it in this Discord. Um... My friend Maybe was dying. I'll think about it. My friend was dying in non Hodgkins. She was 19. She got in the phase three trial for Rituxan. And she um, was in a, uh, she's from Long Island. She was in a uh, group of cancer patients with um, uh, other children who had children and teenagers who had cancer. She was the only one out of 10 people that still alive. And she made it in the Rituxan trial. There's somebody in yeah. here. Who has a severe deadly disease that my friend died of uh, when he was 19 he passed away from cystic fibrosis and there's a wonderful person here who uh, extols the virtues of the drug industry because there was a drug company in Boston called Vertex who saved her life she, she'd probably die without uh, Vertex so I'm not against pharmaceuticals Good. obviously then you I know you might want to actually you know like I said genuflect and you know give thanks for what, what are you against I think the idea of profiting off of um, um, saving someone's life is... Oh, you should boycott medical. boycott doctors then. Yeah, I mean... Well, that's what I'm made, saying. I don't, I don't think it should be... A, and what's going to drive research. If you, gonna, if you boycott, I, I will go outside whatever city you live in and I will stand outside the hospital and say boycott doctors. I think you there's not a very... Be, should not be making money. They need to be doing in the goodness of their hearts, Mark. There's a very interesting discussion to be had here, which is like, what, if that's the case, what is it okay for people to profit off of? What Nothing. what ventures do you think it's acceptable for people to profit? Let's say health, for some reason, is excluded. Can I still have like a very successful accounting firm and make a lot of money that way? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, well, let's say, like let's say we want to innovate just level with me let's say we want to innovate medicine we want to advance medicine that's a that's a noble goal let's say i start a pharmaceutical company and i need a ceo and i want to get somebody really good because i want the company to do a really good job in advanced medicine so i start looking for harvard mbas right these guys make like on average like five hundred thousand dollars a year well they're gonna make money I don't. Why should why should the medical industry have to underpay people and hire people who are that. worse at jobs? Why can't people profit? Why can't people I profit from I didn't doing say good? That doctors shouldn't make a salary. A very shouldn't be paid should very be well for. What why shouldn't do? pharmaceutical well, companies be allowed to make lots of money? Well, 
I'm sorry, there's too and many again, people if, talking at once. I can't reach. Well, no, I mean, uh, here's my whole thing. So let's say one in what is it? One in ten drugs fail. One in fifteen. One in. 20. Yeah, somebody somebody posted it in the chat room. Okay, so uh, whatever the the, uh, the stats are on it, how can you not, when you get a winner, recoup your money for everything else that you tried and failed? I mean, you're not going to be able to continue to create medicine and to continue to advance um, because... what you believe in if you don't make money off of it. If you choose a, if you charge a reasonable rate, like okay, so our our cost in this is one dollar, and we're going to sell it for two dollars, you know? Or right. We understand yeah, how that $10. works. Ten dollars, mm-hmm. exactly. So I, I okay. just don't get what you're saying. Well, let her uh, speak. Let her speak. Yeah. No, I, I want to hear. I want to hear your argument on this. Let's go on mute then. Um, I'm. I, I, there were sort of a few different points in there, um, and I and I lost track. Um, let's start over one more time, real quick, with your question, please. I mean, what is going to drive? Okay, I, this... okay, got you. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so you well, said, what? Right. Why is it wrong um, or for pharmaceutical companies to recoup the money from all the trials they did on the medicines that failed? Right. That failed. Correct. Okay, yeah. I never said there was anything wrong with recouping money. Um, but I do think there is something wrong with um, pricing drugs so high that the profit margins for these companies um, are huge. And once but again, I know it's... Margins, no, hang, hang mm-hmm. on. Your profit margin is going to be huge on your winners because it has to take into account the losers. I mean, so if you're trying to say that, okay, my profit margin is extraordinarily high on this one drug or these two drugs, that's because it's taking into account all the drugs that fucking failed. That, that, okay, that but work. if you look at it uh, more big picture rather than uh, okay. specific drugs and look at um, the revenue, net revenue or whatever of these uh, companies, how much would you guess? Well, I know the facts. I, I did TV interviews on this, so I can tell you right. that the media industry has higher margins than the pharmaceutical industry. Definitely believe that. So if you ask me what's more important, you know, television shows and movies or medicine, I would say medicine. I think um, a, a good question here is what do you think should be done about this? Um, caps. Ca- caps? What, caps? Caps on what? Bro, no caps. Charge on caps, bro. caps on drug prices? What caps, if a drug bro. is just like incredibly, there are drugs that are incredibly expensive to produce. I, I'm trying to remember there's a treatment where they use an incredibly rare isotope that basically has to be like taken from nuclear power plants and decayed to like a specific point by the time it arrives at the hospital. And then they use it as like a contrast in scans. That's yeah, just like unimaginably expensive it costs just ridiculous well, amounts of money to produce that how do you cap that um well it wouldn't be um a stagnant number right it would it would vary that cap would be be able to based vary. on what uh based on uh, market value or well, well we don't i just want to make sure we don't, we're not attacking anybody here you know just because some of us feel differently doesn't mean we have to attack anybody and, and again it, I, i'm sorry you know, because it feels like we're attacking, and I don't want to do that, and I don't want to, you know, kind of, like, endorse that. But I do think the capping idea has been thrown out before, and it's not the worst idea in the world. I think the problem, I guess, for me, from my perspective as a drug guy, is uh, that the healthier this industry is, and the more profitable it is, the more drugs that get made, and the more people get saved. And that's what I've seen with my own eyes, you know. Um, you know, these companies do God's work, you know, uh, a lot of people don't believe that every Purdue out there and every ADHD drug kind of fucks it up for the rest of the industry that actually, and me and myself, unfortunately, you know, I, I fucked it up. Um, but you know, uh, I think my intent was in, in the right place, whereas Purdue's intent wasn't, um, you know, and the ADHD drugs and the Viagra's of the world kind of give the drug industry a bad rap because there's so many great miracles that have happened. And there are people in this chat room that I know that have a rare disease, uh, some of whom bother me quite a bit about it, some of whom don't. There's actually several. And there's no incentive for, for those uh, those uh, uh, people. Uh, t- there's no incentive for the companies to make a drug for those people. And isn't that awful? Like, to have this rare disease, you're suffering, you're hurt, and there's nothing for you because there's not enough money in there for you. Yeah. But you're but you're assuming that the only incentive in uh, in 
in healthcare and pharmaceuticals is money. Well, of course. I mean, yeah, it costs it costs on average four hundred million dollars to make a new film. <laughs> you're talking, but you're talking about costs. I'm talking about profit. Yeah, it costs four hundred million dollars to to make to, to design and create a new drug and bring it to the market. So nobody's giving away that kind of money. And again, think about how many of those drugs actually fail. I mean, so if you, I think fail, that's in, that that gets incorporated into the four hundred. But yeah, it's supposed I, to be. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you're you're just. I mean, you're looking at these high margins on one particular drug, and you're saying, oh, well, this is the issue. This right here, and you're not taking into account everything that goes into it. I mean, if you don't make money on your winners, uh, you're right. just not going to stay in business. If you, yeah. if if your concern is like mostly with like millionaires and billionaires making a lot of money then the solution is just to tax millionaires and billionaires more in the united states Absolutely. Oh my god yeah. question i think that's, tell you about that's an easy solution sorry mo but i love taxes you have a libertarian in the chat oh my god. Huh. please I should be more uh, sensitive to the local word. anarcho libertarian but that's something i don't know anything about to be able to speak on yeah but. martin uh, if you don't mind i have to go but i wanted to ask you one more thing since you bought up the brought up the non-hodgkin's lymphoma uh, sure. I had large diffuse B cell lymphoma in my chest and yeah. they gave me dose suggested epoch R. So I think one of those drugs is the one you're talking about that your friend had the trial. The yeah, R. right toxin. Uh-huh. Um do you know um long term any side effects from any of those drugs? Um once your once your chemo is done, no. Yeah. There's usually there's usually no side effects. There's the risk of secondary malignancy. So it often happens that, you know, um, because, you know, toposide and that high dose regimen, the R epoch um, is a really rigorous regimen uh, that's only for people who are fit and can withstand it because it's much more difficult to take than R chop, which is the standard for many, many years was R chop. Right. Uh, before R, it was just chop and chop was just ugly, old, dirty chemos that were really not uh, too helpful. And uh, so anyway, uh, with the EPOC regimen and the RCHOP regimen, either way, you sort of have this long-term risk of malignancy that's fairly small, but obviously serious. So you just have to sort of go do an annual, um, there's actually liquid biopsy um, by a company called Garden Health. And it, it is just a blood draw and they can actually tell if you're starting to have really, really s slow and small signs of cancer, like even the most minute signs. So you can sort of catch a secondary malignancy before it happens. That's what I personally as a patient would be concerned with. And then obviously the major concern outside of the secondary malignancy uh, issue is just simply the, the primary malignancy returning, right? And usually that doesn't happen, thankfully. Um, you know, the problem with it does happen, uh, you, you know, then there's some, some genetics that you can do um, based on the tumor itself uh, with biopsy to see kind of what that likelihood is. There are certain kind called triple hit lymphoma or double hit lymphoma that's more likely to recur than uh, non-double hit or non-triple hit. So depending, your your oncologist can tell you, your hematologist oncologist well, can tell I'm, you I'm that. I'm done. I've, I've, it's been seven years now. Yeah. Right, right. So, so but it still depends on what that biopsy was. And a lot of that science has been done recently. So, you know, you kind of want to know, I think, to just sort of prepare yourself for vigilance. Um, the good news is uh, relapse refractory DLBCL has had a lot of new treatments. Um, Polivy from, from Roche, um, which is called polituzumab vidotin, and uh, different PI3K kinase inhibitors. There's been a number of really great advances because for a long time, post RCHOP failure, you didn't have a whole lot to do other than there's a couple of little attempts you could do, but really it was just try RCHOP again and yeah. try a different chemo. and. That was basically a death sentence because uh, we failed our chop the first time. You're probably going to uh, fail it the second time. Now, dependent how long your relapse was and stuff like that, you've, you're out seven years. I would say you're basically cured, uh, but you just have to, you know, as you know already. But you know, you just have to stay vigilant and make sure that you know if you something feels up, feels wrong or feels weird that you take care of it immediately. And then also, obviously, you know, you do a sort of screening every year or so just to make sure that you you stay good. But you know, again, I think for for DLBCL, you know, there's a lot of interest in the in the minority of patients, the 10, 20, 30 percent that do relapse. And what do you do about them? Because their disease is rather aggressive. And, you know, um, thankfully, you know, the drug industry has has 
spent some time on that. And, uh, you know, the recent results from Polivy are especially, I'd call out as impressive, but there are others. And it's still um, one of my favorite companies, actually, is, is also made a, a drug for the space. So it's it's getting uh, uh, to be starting to get to a place where NHL is, uh, you know, um, almost at a point where I had a friend who was 20 something and had it. She was this very cute uh, New York girl who I went on a date with. And then, you know, she uh, came up with NHL all of a sudden. And now she's she's sort of back and, you know, back to her old self. And uh, I still have to go on a date with her. And I'm so happy that uh, she's in good shape. Uh, I don't know if she did Epoch as well, but you know, it's a uh, your oncologist knows everything. You know, I don't, I don't. And uh, yeah, no, I was just, I, I remember when I was um, going through chemo and and the that drug was it was kind of red, and I remember like my urine would be kind of red at first when I when I started taking that drug, and then later on, um, like if I would get bit by a mosquito. Um, and I would scratch it a little bit. It would get like like really um, sort of infected, and it took a while to heal. And I figured, okay, well, my body's not working right right now, you know. Um, but it still kind of is that way. And I could be totally, you know, placing blame on chemotherapy for it. But it just because they happened at the same time, and it and it kind of never got better. Um, I guess those kind of things are what I'm thinking of, like. You know the side effects, not necessarily um, the tumor, yeah. or the cancer itself, but yeah, I mean, I I don't think so, but you know, um, anything's possible. One of the the best places for medical information, probably the only place I would trust, is PubMed, PubMed which is yeah. yeah, difficult to read. You know, it's uh, for professionals only, but it's it's what doctors read, right? I mean, sometimes I'll even see a doctor as I'm talking to them, they're looking the stuff up on PubMed. <laughs> It's just like, man, I could do this at home myself. Um, of course, they have the training to understand it, but mm-hmm. it's English. You know, we can all understand it, too. And if you read a little bit on PubMed, the, the recent there was a recent paper about this in the New England Journal where they went through just DLBCL, the state of the art in DLBCL. I'll see if I can find it for you and send it to you. Um, and it talked about some of the long-term side effects. But um, personally, I think that all of the chemo side effects are really short term. There are sometimes lasting side effects like peripheral neuropathy, like pain, um, some yeah. tingling sensation in the nerves after, yeah, you know, my sort of... fingers, the tips of my fingers are numb for months. I thought, yeah. that, you know, I'm probably never going to feel my tips of my fingers again, but it came back. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, I wish you the best. Of course. I, uh, oh. you know, hope that, uh, you know, you, you stay happy and healthy and everything great happens to you. And, you know, if the, anything, uh, bad happens, like I said, I, I hope that, you know, for all of us, you know, whether it's we're sick now or we're going to be sick in the future, we, I think, unfortunately all, you know, um, are going to rely on this industry to do the right thing and try to make some, make the best, you know, sort of medicine. And of course we want it to be affordable and we want a system that everybody can get taken care of with. And, you know, there's been a lot of debate about how best to do that. And, you know, I hope that we figure out better answers. I mean, um, but I do think we have good answers. You know, I think people always see the glass half empty. Um, and uh, part of the fault is the media because, you know, insulin, for example, is one where people really like to place a lot of blame on. And it looks like everything's really bad. But the reality is insulin's a lot more affordable than, than it's made out to be. And as are many other medicines. And we kind of get, like, it's just fun to punch the pharmaceutical industry because, <laughs> like, for whatever reason, it's always seemed like a, a scummy industry. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the reality is, like, it's actually, like, you know, until you have, like, HIV or something, and now, you know, you learn that getting a diagnosis of HIV really isn't that big of a deal. Like, you can live with the disease forever now with no no diminution of your life at all. It's, you know, stunning successes. You know, CML is now functionally cured. Uh, Hodgkin's disease is, is functionally cured. Um, there's so many different, you know, um, tumors now that you can survive 10, 15, 20 years with when the past were 18 months, you know, so there's been so much great success, antibiotics, um, you know, the new asthma drugs. I mean, it's just such a wonderful time for, for medicine, but as generics come out, you're going to see medicine get cheaper and cheaper. That's what I like about, um, uh, cystic fibrosis because that drug's three or $400,000, which is really nutty. So expensive, right? But 
you know, in five or not five years, but about 10 years or 15 years, they'll be generic. And once it's generic, it'll be like $20. So why does it'll, it take so long to get generic? Well, they have a patent. So, you know, right. they have the right to, to exploit their patent. They get 20 years. Um, over time, the drugs all go generic. So you get this one shot as a drug company to make your money. You get 17 to 20 years. It's usually 17. And you have to spend seven or 10 of those years developing the drug. So you actually only get like 10 years of profit. And then once it's generic, there's 50 Indian companies and 50 Chinese companies that all sell it for a penny. And once it's uh, a penny, you know, it's basically, you know, there's no profit to anybody. The Indians can like squeeze out a couple of pennies, but, you know, it's really a, a low margin drug again. And, you know, generic margins are like a couple percent. I mean, they're excruciatingly painful. So you kind of basically are subsidizing these inventions by kind of letting the drug company win for f five or 10 or 15 years. And then everybody gets it for free, you know, which is kind of a not a bad business model, I think. Anyway, yeah, thanks so much. It was it was nice talking to you. I have to go. Yeah, um, play, likewise. But nice to meet you. Uh, bye, bye. Yeah, the the trifecta thing was like, I have a friend with it, and like her life expectancy was like this year or next year. She was like predicted to die, and she takes this drug, and it's like as if nothing happened. Really? You should yeah. talk to Just, Just Breathe when she shows up. She's a uh, residency effort. Yeah, it's it's fucking like I've. I don't know. Tri it's one of trifecta. Things. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. Because I was expecting her to go as well, but no. It's like, fixed now. It's crazy. Yeah, no, my friend Ray, uh, you know, wasn't lucky enough that Vertex was there for it. You know, it was almost like, you know, somebody wants to know more. Uh, I wonder why were you ended up in prison? I cannot disclose that information. Hmm. Same no? way everybody does. <laughs> but nah, I've missed hearing you pontificate on this subject because I mean, again, I I was there. I used to be there before I uh, I had no knowledge of the industry. You know, you you want to go off your emotion, you know, and say, hey, look, people are dying, people are suffering, you know, and it looks like people are getting rich, and the media, of course, paints that up um, because. It, you know, it sells. That's what they do. It sensationalizes it. But um, that was one of the um, things that I really appreciate gleaning from you is just a basic knowledge of the industry. And again, I'm a, I can't stress the word basic enough, but... Um, you're, you're, you're probably one of the smartest guys I met in prison. I mean, uh, very, 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 very few people in prison with much intelligence. So Sadly, that's not yeah. as much of a compliment as I'm giving, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, too smart to be in prison. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, like I said, I've, the highlight of my day was uh, listening to these, uh, uh, to him talk about, to, to hearing Martin talk about certain subjects, because, I mean, he really understood them i mean if he didn't understand them, he, he doesn't talk about them and uh, well i was lucky to study them with you as well so we were able to learn a lot of this stuff together um that yeah. was a lot of fun you know it's oh, it was it was great it was <laughs> it's what got me through the bid i mean i wouldn't be <laughs> without it but it's what got me through without you know absolutely hating life so yeah no i'm happy and uh it was fun you know i think uh Continuing it uh, here is difficult because there's a now back in the real world. I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel this way. It's like, um, so you know, there's so many distractions now. You know, there's so many things that you oh know, my God. yeah, right. Like, there's now a ton of things to do, and reading books is like last on the list, right? No, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I haven't picked up a book since the day I left. Not even in the halfway house. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I was reading a book every couple of days, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a different world out there, and you have to find a way to prioritize your your time, which I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> well, you, you, I think you got the right first step with those cats. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad to have them, except one of them just pissed in the floor. So I was going to ask you if you have litter boxes and that shit. <laughs> 
definitely have a litter box, but I don't think they're quite suggested a litter box. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a suggested one. I don't think they quite know how to use it yet. I've put them in it a couple of times, but I think they just think I'm dropping them in some litter box. <laughs> they'll use it. They they'll um, use it. They'll use it. This is a, a completely new experience for me. So when I had cats as a kid. My mom was taking care of them, so I'm now learning what it's like to actually try to train some. I don't think you have to train them. They know. I hope so. God, I hope so. <laughs> They're probably trolling you. <laughs> They're just like, My yeah, we're met. yeah, we're bad boys. We're brothers. We're gonna shit wherever we want. We don't care. <laughs> like they're just like doing their cat thing. Eventually, they're gonna use litter box. Yeah, don't give them any ideas. I I haven't found any shit yet but it's it's definitely going to be coming so yeah no they they like lose using litter box they I'm just they have... i have it in my hands right now i'm bringing it to them so hopefully they'll decide that that's better than the floor yeah they figure it out yeah. which is kind of a it's a bit shocking to me like uh, it's amazing yeah i saw a video um on instagram yesterday i have a another friend that I met in prison um, who he breeds um, rare ball pythons now. But he sent me a video of um, this clutch of uh, eggs. I mean, these things literally just hatched. And the second they come out, they're striking. They're, you know, they, they come out ready for war. And it's absolutely incredible, the, the, the stuff that's kind of pre-programmed into them this knowledge that's carried down it comes with cat 1.0 yeah exactly <laughs> so now uh at the halfway house there are you in a room with like what four other people or is it it's just me and a, another dude we have two bunk beds here so we can fit four but it's just me and another dude it's not too bad oh yeah it's it's actually pretty chill he's out, out uh all week all weekend for the three day weekend so it's pretty good oh yeah that's great yeah, we had a uh, four man rooms so yeah it must have been uh shitty it wasn't too bad until the end um as long as you get decent people in there, you're all right. I mean, it's the people that make it up every time, so. I'm trying to uh, paste this escort. Maybe Wait, I'm what? like, yeah, there's an escort uh, I matched with. Oh, I pasted it like up. 10 times. Yeah, I pasted it like 10 times. Um, yeah, I'm still getting used to Discord on a phone, but. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. give the give the face. Now you see what I was talking about. Uh, everything on the phone, dude. Oh my god. Sucks, trying yeah. To, oh, trying to copy and paste all that stuff was an absolute nightmare. I mean, you would think it would be easy. Every, everything should have been easy, but it took so long. <laughs> 